I'm not a man for fancy, and I'm a stranger to mayhem. But today, something very peculiar happened. Outside, which is remarkable for I live in a repellent part of town. I was glad. On arrival at work, I was greeted by a sour look from our head of department. His wife's totally bald and he keeps her in a nest under the floorboards. He followed me round, tutting and scowling like a prune in a collar. A collared prune. You're late, he said, which I couldn't deny. And look at your desk, it's revolting. For such a thin man, you're all over the place. We looked at the desk in unison. It's a simple affair. Learn to love your desk? I can't learn to love this desk. Being the quill sharpener, I sharpened all the quills until they were all pointy. And then I buggered off. It was pissing dogs outside, pitch black. I passed three peasant ladies lying on the path, literally. Their bare legs were in evidence. I'd never seen such girl. Just then, a carriage drew up. It was our director's. Yes! Beautiful sunsplash base with heliotrope fittings. I saw through the window that it was the director's daughter. She alighted from the carriage, so noble, all dressed in green like a swan. Oh, her legs are beautiful instruments. I had a splendid view from the puddle. I noticed a little dog was dawdling with no aim. I've seen that dog before. It's called Medjie. Medjie, what an aristocratic name. Unlike Midgie, which is a small buzzing thing. I sat there for some time, and then I heard a faint voice. Hello, Medjie! That's what it said. Midgie, are you no speaking? I've no seen you in weeks. Would you like a boiled ham sandwich? Then I noticed Medgie sniffing round another wee dog. No, no, Frank. You're not to talk to me in the street. I implore you. I couldn't believe it. Two dogs having a chat. But I was there and that's what happened. I noticed Frank, the second dog, was more casual in his demeanour. Smoking a clay pipe. Oh, I fancy you. Let go of me, you beast. I'm not to be toyed with in public. Are you going to give me it? Are you going to give me it? Give me it. Touch it. No, 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 let go of me, you beast. I wrote to you two weeks ago. Oh, go, go. Smedley couldn't have delivered my letter. Just then, the two dogs spied me listening in and reverted to the natural dialect. Power. Roof. But the dogs could speak. And more, they could read and write. This impressed me greatly. Dogs, you see. I followed the male dog home. He lives in the fag end of town in a condemned minaret. I have a note of the address. And all I keep thinking about is, it was never a Frank. By God, it's Wednesday! Our director must be a very clever man, for his study is littered with books. They're all in French or German, and I don't understand a word of them. Not a bloody syllable, because I have no books of my own. And Fat Patsy, the lady I lodge with, she has no books either. Only pamphlets beekeeping for the housebound and soils of the Orient. She's totally addicted to cough mixture. It must be great making decisions and being clever and everything. Our director's head must be stuffed with facts. It's astounding that his forehead's so compact. It had gone half past twelve, and our director hadn't even left his bed. I imagine he was lying there appreciating the mural he's got up in his ceiling, depicting commerce through the ages. Warring factions separated by the cool hand of reason. Nymphs carrying invoices and slips. Very inspiring. I imagine he was sitting there, looking up at that, and dictating through a hosepipe. So I was left on my own, and after that I did this. <coughs> and after that, 
I'd be a walnut on my hand that looked like the moon. Not my hand, because my hand looks like a hand. No, the walnut looked like the moon. It did! <laughs> At 2.30, something happened that no pen could adequately describe. The door opened. And in she came. The director's daughter. She nodded and said, Has my dad been in? And I felt like saying to her, Look, Your Excellency, look at this walnut. It's a spitting image of the moon, Your Grace. But I didn't. I just said, Hello. And she said, Look, has my dad been in? And I said, No. No, he's not. Then she looked at me. And then dropped her handkerchief. Oh, it was fluttering to the ground. But I got there first, dived down and headed it back up in the air. Her Excellency took hold of my head and attempted to place me up her sleeve. Then she thought about it, shook vibrantly, dropped me, and marched out of the room. She'd left her handkerchief behind. And on examining it, I found it smelt of Lovely bees. On my way out the door, the head of department spat on me. The ignorant cack doesn't know I'm on heading terms with nobility. At home, I lay on the bed for hours and copied out some fine poetry. my life's become without you to smile and shake. Oh, lovely dear, oh, lovely doll, the sand is blue today. Probably by Pushkin. After that, I took a cab and stood outside her house for hours. It began to rain. Oh, it was great. <laughs> Today, the head of the department was in the right huff. He took me aside and said, Stop hounding the director's daughter about the streets. Follow her around once more and you'll be shot on from a great height until you can't take it anymore and you'll beg me to stop. Is that clear? Who does he think I am? To hell with it. His own head reminds me of one of those bottles you get in chemist shop windows. And that hair he puts in curlers, the bottled poof. Have you seen his hands? Paraplegic octopi. How he negotiates front doorways. Ah! Hence the scowl. I am a gentleman. Just because he's a court councillor, he thinks he's a bee's knees. He thinks he's it. He's not it. He's not it. <laughs> <laughs>